The Science of Happiness Note 3. Like other authors, uh, Stefan Klein mentions the study of the Notre Dame nuns who had to um, write down a sort of a diary and they have been tested by psychologists to see what um, these notes uh, reveal. Um, and it was very interesting. There were nuns who have expressed uh, batitude, exhilaration, uh, life, events, uh, God obviously, and uh, his uh, kindness, gifts. And there were others who were, uh, let's say, a bit more neutral. I don't recall reading about any negative nuns, so to speak. But um, I think I remember reading in some places that quite often being neutral uh, sends one in the camp of negative. That is, neutral or negative quite often are similar in results of experiments, tests, uh, other circumstances. So, um, what was interesting was that uh, the nuns who wrote uh, with happy uh, phrases uh, and uh, had this um, uh, wonderful attitude towards life lived longer. Uh, I think about nine or ten years longer than the others. and what adds some more weight to this uh, research uh, is the fact that they this is what made the difference positivity versus let's say neutral uh, perspective why because these were interesting uh, participants if you will in in research uh, because there was nothing else to differ the to make the difference, differentiate, whatever. Uh, they all lived in the same conditions in uh, nunnery, in a monastery. They ate the same food. They had to respect the same schedule, uh, rules. They didn't drink. They, I guess, they were not allowed. They didn't smoke. So everything else was the same except for what was revealed in these notes um, another interesting um, research uh, revealed in this uh, in this book is the import uh, uh, emphasizes the importance of uh, having uh, freedom having uh, the possibility to decide for uh, for oneself um, which is very important together with another diversity the need to diversify uh, I will return a little to this but let me just say that two canton two districts of Switzerland have been uh, tested and it was discovered that in the one where people had more say on what was going on in their uh, circumscription, if you want, uh, were happier than the others. Even in Switzerland, which is very well known for the referendums, for the fact that their citizens are asked uh, for everything, almost, there are some differences. So, being democratic, one uh, area would allow its uh, inhabitants to decide uh, on smaller amounts of money to be spent. I'm just, from the top of my head, that's not the accurate figure for sure, but just an example. Say in this uh, district, uh, they were uh, uh, able to go down as low as 100,000 if the area had to spend 100,000 people were asked as opposed to the other where only half a million 
500,000 were considered a worthy figure to ask uh, people about. Uh, of course, they have accounts that it's not like in places like here or India, I'm just saying, where it's discretionary sometimes. If an uh, official has the pen power, he will just sign and embezzle maybe some of the money. Um, it was so democratic. And the, the place where it was so democratic it showed a, a much, uh, not much, but significant, a significantly higher level of uh, happiness. Now, um, in the question of diversity, I was thinking that there is here a little paradox. Uh, on one hand, you have the need to variety. The, this, this is uh, making people happy to change. But then you have also the rituals. So how do you balance that? I guess you have to uh, refer to Aristotle, the golden mean. Don't exaggerate in one way or the other. Uh, because I have, it is encouraged to establish rituals, uh, good positive rituals like exercise every day, like uh, express gratitude for what you have every day, uh, enjoy moments, uh, carpe diem, get immersed, immersed into um, pleasurable activities. But then you also need to change. So. A ritual is something you do every day, but then you need to change also to a degree what you do every day. Well, I guess you exercise on a bike and try and change the itinerary, perhaps.